They departed Charleroi this morning with 193.6 kilometres up ahead of the field and the none too small matter of the Murderie, a climb that defines this race. Providing so much drama in the past, had to be taken three times as part of a finishing circuit measuring just shy of 32 kilometres at the end. You had to be brave to be in the break, because surely the favourites would come good at the very last. Rosa took it on for Arkea. Howes was there, the American champion from EF Education. Monique from Lotto Sudal. Alpacin had Vivike up there. Quebecer represented by Arme. Lamatink from Intermarche Wanti, Velasco from Gazprom, and Martins from Sport Vlaanderen. Well, in the end, by the time the bell rang for the last lap, including the murder we they were to get yet another preview, and Gesker it was at the front of a, a group of hopefuls that just pushed on ever so slightly. You've got to have good luck on a day like this. And that was absent from UE Team Emirates that didn't actually start the day due to a Covid test. On the deck, here, Thomas Pidcock. He was relayed back in by Theo Gegen Hart. And maybe that gave Hart, perhaps, to some of those who really didn't want a, a ramp specialist, somebody explosive at the end of the day. So the pace was high, continued to be so on the approach to the last couple of climbs. Well, the Côte de Chemin looked like it was curtains for the breakaway. Last man standing was to be Lamatink of Intermarche Wanti. But Tim Wellens decided he was going to come and join the fun. Bridged over to Silvan Monique of Lotto Sudal and on policing duties. As ever, Astadar's Omar Freyle. He killed off this move. And then the others started to have a dig. Richard Carapaz, it was, that came out of the pack, maybe to offer up a wheel, perhaps to Pidcock or Adam Yates later on. Well, as the thinning down continued, we dealt with the Côte de Chemin, still the Mur up ahead, and finally our breakaway had its last man absorbed. Pushing on were AG2, our Citroën, Cosnefoir and Chapuzin, looking good. The favourites, though, knew only too well that you had to be in a very good place and that was up towards the four by the time we took some late twists and turns. Well, the Moor is a cruel place to operate. Valverde had to use the pavement to get himself up to where he wanted to be. Where the likes of Roglic wanted to be was out front. He bowed his time with Alaphilippe stalking him and pushed on. Alaphilippe, the world champion, then just didn't panic. Valverde now up alongside Alaphilippe and it was the favourites that came to the fore with Roglic digging in at six or seven bike lengths at this point. But Alaphilippe just pulling away from Valverde, timing his run to absolute perfection. Well, using the arrow of Roglic, he came out of the slipstream and went for it. The world champion getting to the line and making us talk about him all over again. Wonderful day for Alaphilippe and for cycling. Roglic just edged into second place with Valverde winding back the clock to make the podium on the day. Good finish as well from Michael Woods from Israel's Startup Nation. But Alaphilippe has done it again. Missed last year because of the World Championships and fatigue setting in. But he now has three wins on this great test. Valverde missing out on a record sixth. Roglic, well, he went early, but he had no choice on this hill that seems to be just about owned by this man now. Delight palpable for Alaphilippe and no surprise. Alaphilippe ahead of Roglic, Valverde, Woods, Warren Bargy getting up well for Arkea. Tom Pidcock managed sixth place ahead of Goodo, Chavez, Carapaz and Shackman. A worthy winner it always is here, however. None worthier, certainly on this day, than Julian Alaphilippe. He's done it again. Wonderful day's racing and more great racing to come, of course, with Liège-Baston-Liège.